Welcome, everybody, and thank you for dialing into today's webinar. Uh, we're, we're looking at uh, picking, packing, and shipping uh, for digital ERP. Uh, my name is Jeff Lem. I'm the president and CEO of Portable Intelligence, and I'll be joined today by two other distinguished guests that I'm very excited to present today. So once again, as well, a special shout out to our customers who have dialed in to see um, what's next as far as your supply chain. So let me start off with a, um, an agenda. We're going to be looking at the Agile Warehouse, R Plus, um, the advanced stock schedule, uh, which uh, Simon will go into detail with Starship that uh, Chris from V Technologies will be going over. And then we're going to do a quick demo of showing how all three components work, R Plus, with our shipping module, dock schedule, and uh, Starship. Uh, about our company, we've deployed approximately 150 visual manufacturing companies with our solutions. Uh, we have over 25 years of supply chain experience. Uh, we ourselves are on Visual 905. And uh, as for myself, um, as I mentioned, I'm the founder and CEO of PI. And uh, we just came out just with a, a new book as well. And also serve on the Visual uh, Canadian User Group. This, uh, this, we're going to start a quote today from um, General Dwight Eisenhower, who credited logistics and supply chain to winning battles and the importance of having those supply lines. As well, I want to include a, a quote from Mother Teresa. This um, Grow Where You're Planted was uh, advice given to a fellow named Mo Siegel, who started Celestial Seasonings, who basically started the, uh, that whole market for herbal teas. Uh, in 1984, he sold his company to Kraft Foods. Uh, by 1989, he was um, doing charitable work with Mother Teresa and heard about his former company and their struggles. And at that time, he was grappling with the idea of, do I go get back into the business? And he, he was contemplating buying back his company from Kraft, and this is what Mother Teresa told him, which is basically, um, go get it. You know, it's where you're planted. And, and those are the two underlying themes for today's webinar. One about the importance of logistics and supply chain, and secondly about taking what you have today and really growing it to the next level. I'm also uh, directing to a study that was just recently done by Ernst & Young, and they identified that 52% of the customers are really feeling the pressure in the supply chains today. You know, it's, it's all about uh, responding, it's all about um, applications, information, material flow, and trying to stay on top of the rapidly changing environment, especially when it comes to e-commerce. The average lifespan of a Fortune 500 company is now less than 18 years. And what that means is that for everybody, we need to make changes, we need to continually to improve. And we're seeing it across the board. So you're not immune if you're B2B. Chances are your customers are working with um, other uh, directly with consumers who are expecting same day shipping or expecting to be able to order by five o'clock and get, getting it even the same day. So that pressure is, is going to be translated and pushed down to everybody's supply chain. So we're not immune to it and we have to be agile. So in essence, you can have the best machinery, the most highly trained worker, highly motivated and conscientious workers, but if they can't be supplied efficiently, all those advantages would be negated. And the key to being able to stay on top of all those changes, of course, is what we call the Agile Warehouse. The Agile Warehouse we define as having speed, flexibility, and control, allowing for rapid response and, and adaptation to changing conditions. You know? And in essence, what that really means is being able to have the processes, people and technology working in concert with each other so that you have those components of agility. You know? And what happens when you don't have good processes and technology ends up falling up upon people to carry the balance. So in essence, what you now have is a system that's highly dependent on people and it's very difficult to scale that model when you, when you have everybody running around with all this knowledge of process, et cetera, in their heads. So the idea is we want to restore balance uh, to your warehouse and actually uh, inject better processes and technology and, of course, training for your people. So now we have a trifecta working between those three to deliver that speed, flexibility, and control. 
let's take a look at what the Agile warehouse looks like. This is a study we've uh, done of uh, just two of our customers. One on the left, the furniture manufacturer, just went live uh, a little over a year ago. And you can see how uh, the top blue graph, their sales have risen steadily to, in this case, 65 million. Yet their inventory has stayed relatively flat at once at um, basically around 23 million. That represents about a $1.6 million difference that the inventories would have grown were it not for using um, RF Plus. And over to the right, uh, you'll see a, a more longer term customer. They've been using our system for over 10 years, but this is the results from the last five years. And you can see that they've uh, incurred savings of 1.1 million. So despite having uh, sales increases of 22% over the last five years, their inventories have only increased 2%. So again, you know, a $1.1 million difference in, in the inventory that did not have to store. So let's take a look at what your supply chain looks like. So you get an idea as to where all, their, all our solutions fit. Got your supplier, who pushes out materials via transportation to your uh, receiving and issuing your uh, to your warehouse, where it's then manufactured, uh, work and process, and then it goes to the finished goods warehouse. And then you've got shipping and labeling on the trucking side, and through to customer, uh, through your customer who's doing a retailer or could be a distribution center. R Plus handles receiving through to shipping, and the system you're gonna see today, advanced stock schedule, takes care of all your transportation through to your scheduling. Uh, and then we have Starship handling the shipping side of it, uh, rate shopping, EDI, shipping documents, and then you've got the dock schedule, um, handling the tendering of your purchase orders, carrier manager, and carrier performance. As for RF Plus, we're a true end-to-end -end manage, uh, inventory management software for Infor Visual ERP. Our deployment practices are based on, on best practices. So not only are we going to be putting in processes, but best practice processes that uh, we've um, basically developed and, and created in our software. We also have the ability to customize the software. So be it as a, a change request or a roadmap, um, those changes uh, we're continually improving our software. And we're comprised of four basic modules, inbound, inventory, production, and outbound. Uh, we also have on the receiving side of it, a little more, a little more detail. They're all web-based screens. So you've got KPI metrics that you see on the left. You've got um, PO, inventory screens, uh, specific screens tailored for the mobile users. And they all run on ruggedized um, devices, be it from Honeywell or Zebra. We also have the pick, pack, and ship, which you'll be seeing in, in a little while in a little more detail, showing you how to process the orders and um, uh, through barcode scanning. And now I'm going to turn it over to Simon, who will give you a quick overview of his, uh, of his advanced stock schedule. Hi, everyone. Uh, just quickly to introduce myself. Uh, I've been in supply chain and IT, wearing both hats at uh, automotive and consumer packaged goods companies for the last 20 years. And over the course of those 20 years, uh, we've been refining this doc schedule, this advanced doc schedule uh, on the visual platform and also on other ERP uh, platforms. Uh, so we're excited to, to share that with you today and, and uh, working with uh, PI to, to get it out to, to more users. So, um, First question is, is why do we um, need this application? What's the purpose it serves? And it's, it's mostly because Infor Visual lacks a nice graphical, easy to, to read, one, one, one page shot of what's going on with my shipping. Uh, and on, on shipping wise, do I have the inventory to ship it? Is there a truck been booked for it? How many shipments do I have on slate for today and tomorrow? Has this particular truck shown up for, for the order yet? So now with this doc schedule, which we'll see uh, through this presentation and afterwards we'll be demoing it, you'll see what, what the solution is 
uh, for those questions that we, we just asked there. So we've been refining it over 20 years. Uh, our target audiences of being people at the shipping dock, customer service staffs, salespeople like using it because they want to see their sales orders pushed through, especially at the end of the month. And it's all in real time, as real time as uh, your inventory transactions are happening. So we'll just take you through the screens uh, and we'll be doing a live demo just shortly after this. But the system is a, a multi-site, multi-database. Uh, you can quickly, I don't see a mouse, you can quickly see over here these filtering options. So these are the main filtering options that, that uh, the doc schedule has and, and I'll show you where you can filter on every single column that's on the screen. But uh, for this, for a shipping department that's working with multiple warehouses, they might only be interested in one particular department. Um, you can filter on city, uh, customer, uh, who the freight carrier is, etc. There's dynamic color coding for you to see uh, whether a shipment's been shipped out when this shaded green, whether it's been shipped out and there's some sort of exception to it. On uh, the three columns here, if it's white and not shipped out yet, that means there's enough inventory to support that order. If it's yellow, it's 25% uh, short or less. Orange, 50% or less shortage. And then we have a red, which is more than 50% short, which needs to get dealt with. Uh, this pink highlight, it's been shipped, but it's been shipped a day early. There's drill down functionality where if you double click on an order, it'll bring up details of what's on the order. So all the, all the uh, custom order lines on there. You can drill down further and you get a material planning uh, window that shows you what the current inventory status is, all the demand against that product, and all the supply that's expected against that product. Uh, details of where the inventory is. There's a bill of material, which you can drill down further, and that'll update uh, the material planning to see, you know, do I have all the materials that I need? If I don't, when's it coming? Uh, there's optional uh, email tendering for uh, your freight POs, so it can automatically send out an email to your carrier of choice uh, based on a standard uh, visual uh, demand supply linked PO. And we keep status of uh, what process that PO is in, whether it's been declined, accepted, whether it's been mailed out and not, not seen yet. Uh, this is also a great communication tool where uh, your shipping department can track and can input what time the trucks arrived, when it was docked. Uh, when it ships out of the system, uh, we'll, we can update either manually or, uh, by the shipping department or automatically based on the ship out time in visual. Uh, but if they need to, to say something, instead of doing it through email or having to pick up the phone, they can put the notes on here, and everyone that's using the doc schedule, your customer service folks, your salespeople, they can see that, you know, why didn't this truck ship? It was a no-show. Uh, you need to do something about it. So we're just, uh, again, looking at the color coding. Uh, the email queue is also color coded. Uh, a is accepted. B has been declined. M has been mailed out. And to look at uh, the, the um, be able to email, which is uh, optional, an optional module on top of this, is you can just click which orders you want to email out. So these X ones have expired. Uh, by default, we set it to a 24-hour expiration, so the carrier has 24 hours to decide whether they can do the load or not. And if they can't, then it automatically expires, and it prompts uh, customer service or the logistics uh, personnel in your, your company to, to, to do something about it. Uh, if there's nothing, uh, no status in the queue, that means nothing's been done yet. So these trucks need to get uh, need to get booked. So you pick uh, which orders you want to select the email. And I'm missing a chunk there. There's an email button, and away it goes. On the carrier side, this is the email that they see. It has all the details of that particular uh, freight, 
that needs to get booked and they can choose whether they, they accept it or not. We're, we're recording when that link is clicked so we know that it's been viewed. And then uh, when the carer accepts it or declines it, we're recording that as well uh, and highlighting that back on the, on the doc schedule. If they decline it, there's also an email that gets pushed out uh, to, so that it's reacted to right away. Once they accept the order, they can quickly download uh, the PDF file. So everything happens automatically. You don't have to keep track of emails. Did this carrier reply back to me that they, they acknowledge it, that they accept it? So we'll, we'll go into it later uh, with a live demo and we'll hand it off to, uh, to Chris here. Great. Thanks, Simon. And thanks everybody for taking a little bit of time to uh, check out our solutions today. First, I'll tell you a little bit about V-Technologies. Uh, we've been providing integrated shipping solutions since the late 80s. Um, and uh, I've been with the company for about 18 years now, working with different uh, development partners on both the ERP and the WMS side. Uh, so talk a little bit about why you'd want to consider Starship. Um, our application has connections to over 20 different common carriers uh, with uh, direct integrations to the web services of the various carriers. We also offer some interfaces to some different 3PL or broker organizations, as well as a TMS that can host tariffs for common carriers. Uh, that supports both national and regional uh, parcel carriers as well. Uh, in the States, we have uh, support for UPS, FedEx, DHL, uh, and the post office. We also have uh, some regional carriers like Speedy and OnTrack. Uh, in Canada, we also support the UPS and FedEx, as well as uh, Canada Post, Purolator, and Canpar. Uh, with Starship, you have access to discount postage rates uh, built into the system. Uh, we offer integrations to multiple uh, EDI platforms and uh, WMS platforms as well. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the RF Plus integration that's been developed. Um, this will offer you more robust integration uh, with the pick-pack functionality uh, into your visual manufacturing ERP. And Starship gives you some additional tools to uh, promote your brand on labels, uh, with uh, automated emails that go out to insert uh, your logo, any uh, links back into your site or your shopping cart, as well as promotional material that can be attached to the notice notifications that go out. Uh, there is a dashboard that's included that gives you uh, reporting and analytics to take a look at your freight spend over time, see the shipping activity out in the warehouse, uh, so you have uh, some more visibility to that from the front office side. Uh, we can help you automate the carrier rate shopping and service selection process with some powerful um, ship via and rate shopping tools. Uh, so if you want to take that selection out of the hands of the operator, uh, you can have Starship enforce your business logic to pick the fastest or the cheapest or uh, the best carrier for a particular destination. Uh, centralized install uh, with support for a remote desktop or Citrix, uh, so you can have one instance of the software and share it across the entire network. Uh, we also offer a line item support, so you can bring in all of the, the visual part numbers and that can link into any of the commodity-based information to populate all your paperwork for international, uh, any of the export documentation that you need to produce uh, for freight, things like uh, NMSC codes, freight classes to populate on your bills of lading, as well as uh, hazardous uh, materials uh, to populate all of the, uh, the paperwork for that as well. Uh, just a quick infographic here, taking a look at the workflow. Uh, so information will be coming out of your visual um, uh, ERP database uh, flowing through into RF Plus, where you're going to do the pick and the pack, assign a license plate number, and then that information will be shared with Starship so you can easily uh, manifest it or tender it with your uh, common carriers. From there, we're able to do a handshake with your EDI platform, so we're able to uh, automate that uh, ASN process to notify your trading partners, and then also taking that information and making it available back on the visual side so you have it there for customer service, for invoicing any inquiries on those screens. Uh, just a quick look here at the Starship uh, user interface. Uh, this is the majority of the time you'd be spending in the application would be in the client. Uh, there are some other utilities that you get with 
uh, Starship as well, but uh, this is where uh, you'd be interacting with uh, the sales transactions that have been picked and packed, and you're now able to manifest that or tender it with your common carrier. Starship also has a packaging assistant. Uh, we're picking up all the packaging detail, the items that have been distributed to your containers uh, coming out of uh, out of uh, RF Plus, but you do have the ability to um, do some packing uh, over here on the Starship side, uh, palletize or package up your goods as well. Uh, Starship also has a front office utility for a dashboard. You have a, a heat map here that shows you, you know, common uh, shipping trends where you're shipping to most often. Uh, you have some uh, graphs or uh, charts that are built in uh, that can give you uh, reporting over a period of time. And then you also have access to your history here. So anybody in the front office can drill down into your orders, take a look at the, um, the activity out in the warehouse, see the tracking status, also reprint any labels or documents that uh, you may need to have access to. Okay, and thank you, done. Chris. Yep, we're good, thanks, Chris. Yep, so thanks, we're gonna turn, yep, thank you, we're gonna turn to your chat for a demo as well. There's also a chat box. You can um, enter any questions that you may have that you'll see uh, during the demo, so we'll answer them at the end of the, uh, of the presentation. Hello, uh, hello everyone. Thanks for joining in today. This is Irshad, part of uh, software uh, side of portable intelligence. To start with, we will be looking at visual side on how the customer order will look like and uh, what lines and what orders are we going to pick, pick in place. This would be the customer order that we would be uh, that we would have a shipment with. These are the lines. First line would be an on-trace part, second line would be a traceable part, and the third be a freight one. So uh, let's go to RF Plus, look at the customer order on how it looks like. So uh, this is the uh, control center of RF Plus. We have all these dashboard operations and all these configuration settings that we could do, setting changes for the customer order. So let's go to the customer order page and sorry for the interruption. Let me log in again. So this is the login page of Control Center and this is the login page of um, RF Plus as you can see. So let's log into the uh, Control Center and see how it looks like. This is the customer order page where we have the customer orders and the customer order that we would be dealing with today is CBO LPM 51. And you have this order and when you click on it, it will give you the details on what line it has, just like how uh, visual, did, visual did. So we have the total ship quantity zero because we haven't uh, shipped anything. Let's go to our plus handheld. So we log in with the uh, credentials for the So we select the warehouse, and then so these are this is the dashboard, and uh, we have all these inbound, inventory, production, outbound, and IBT. So we click on outbound, and let's do the picking. So the difference between Visual and RF Plus is Visual does the shipment only, but uh, RF Plus has a picking process uh, where we actually pick the customer order and pick all the associated lines. And they put it to the staging location, and from the staging location until the truck arrives, we do the systematic process of shipping. Um, uh, in this scenario, we are going to do the shipment through Starship. So we will show you how the shipment in Starship works. So we have a shipment in R plus as well, but we have integrated Starship. Do the picking for that order. We have three options to do. Either we can select it from the list or we can enter the customer order or we can scan. So as we move on, uh, I would be scanning the uh, customer orders and uh, part IDs to show how the scanning works. Let me uh, scan the customer order and you will 
here beep sound, which means the customer order has been scanned and now we have the line field where again you can type in select from the list. So the list actually gives you uh, the part IDs and the inventory level uh, according to the availability in the warehouse. And yeah, so either you can select from the list or you can enter the line numbers. So that will take you to the next field, which is from location, where you are going to pick the part ID from. Uh, so the from locations, again, I'm going to scan, uh, or you can select from the list or you can type in. So uh, let me scan the from location, which is B123. And uh, that again, uh, does the scanning and the validation of the location, uh, confirming that there is inventory available in that location. So now this is the trays and parts section where you can either um, scan the part for a non-trace part. Uh, if it is a traceable part, uh, here you'll have to uh, enter the trays or scan the trays ID for that part. So since this is a non-traceable part, we will have to do a reconfirmation of the part ID, the non-trace part ID. Either you can uh, uh, type in or scan. Let me scan. And now it moves to the quantity field. So let's pick uh, 100 quantity. And as you can see, the progress bar actually moves as I enter the quantity. So when after I pick, uh, this will uh, enable the uh, com transaction uh, committing button. And once you click on it, uh, the transaction is completed, the line is completed. So again, you will have to do the same process for all the available uh, other lines. Uh, let's say you select from the list this time and you select, if you'd like to select from the list again this time, Let's do it from B123. Uh, here, since it's a traceable part, you will have to scan the traces. You have a list icon that will give you all the available traces. Since this part has only one trace available, it is auto-populated. And now it goes to the quantity field where you can enter the quantity, enable the button, and commit the transaction. And now let's do the third line same again. Uh, yeah, when there is only one location available, it is going to auto-populate. and um, Let's scan the part ID. And that takes you to the quantity field. And after you enter quantity, that gives you the committing um, button. And once you have committed all the uh, transactions for the customer order, all the lines when they are completed, you will receive a confirmation. If you'd like to finish the order, uh, you can uh, press yes to confirm the order. Now uh, the order is finished and you have an option of printing the pack list. You, then, you can either print the pack list through here or through visual. So let me close the screen. So now the next process would be packing. So once the picking is done, uh, it's, uh, now uh, the packing process starts. Um, the same uh, concept here, either you can enter the customer order, you can scan the customer order, or you can select from the list. So I, I would be selecting from the list at this point and uh, the shipping LPN, either you can use a existing LPN or you can uh, uh, generate a new LPN. And this again gives you all the list of uh, parts that has to be packed. So let's scan, let me scan the RJ45 in one LPN and I would like to pack 100 and put it aside. Now let me regenerate another LPN and select, uh, I select a part from the list and select a trace from the list and put 100 in that LPN and put the third line again in the same LPN, enter the quantity and commit the transaction. And once all these lines are packed, you would be uh, having a confirmation where you'd like to close the order and close the LPNs associated. So once you say S, now, um, uh, the star, now the data will be available in Starship. So this is the Starship screen where uh, you can actually uh, um, do the shipment. So this is the lookup button where you'll have the access for all those customer orders that you have actually packed. Uh, yeah, you can select the customer orders from these lists. This is the order that we recently uh, processed through packing. So either we can process uh, directly through the uh, through this button, uh, saying process selector, or you can load the document. So in this case, let us load the document and uh, uh, see what it actually looks like. So these are the custom boxes, uh, which means the LPNs that we actually uh, pack through the packing process. So the first custom box, which means the first LPN has RG45, and the second one has a keypad dollar on the right one. 
and this gives you uh, the weight of weight for the custom box. If you click on it, it will give you the weight for the custom box, uh, and they have a limitations on um, uh, how much they can actually uh, be allowed. So yeah, more on the shipment side um, or on the packaging side, if you want to do any kind of modifications, you can do uh, through Starship. And once you're done with all your modifications, you can uh, click on this uh, ship process button to ship the uh, to ship the shipment. So once you click on it, uh, it will process. And yeah, and if you go to the lookup button again, that order will not be here as that order has been processed. So at this point, uh, 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 the shipment has been processed. And um, so let's go back to visual and see, uh, this is the order we actually processed. So let me refresh the screen. So the status shows closed. And uh, if we go to the shipping entry to look at the pack list ID on what items have been shipped. So this is the pack list ID we just shipped. So that gives you all the lines uh, that has the order quantity of all these and the ship quantity uh, has been updated here and uh, the ship status is shipped. And that's what the pack list and look like. And this is the variable number that uh, Visual will be updated with. And uh, as a last step, we would just have a look at the um, look at the uh, pack list, which will be printed uh, through Starship packaging packing list. Uh, this is how it will be looking like. Uh, that has a tracking number and um, the custom order information. This is just a sample one, not the exact one that we actually shipped. So this is how it will be looking like. Um, that's about for the. Uh, Picking, packing, and uh, shipping process through Starship. Um, any other, I mean, if you have any questions, uh, we have a question uh, and answer session at the end. Uh, you can always uh, have your questions ready and uh, we'll try to answer all your questions um, as, um, as easy as possible. Okay, thanks everyone again. Uh, now I would like to transfer uh, to Simon, uh, who will uh, take over the session and he will uh, explain you more on the doc schedule side. All right, thanks, Rashad. So uh, we already went through some of the screens earlier with the doc schedule. Now I'm going to show you uh, live what it looks like. So this is the doc schedule. It's a uh, multi warehouse, so let me just refresh this. That's how quick it comes up, at least with this test data set that we have in here. But we have two warehouses set up in this uh, majestic company. Uh, one is called Main, and one is called Secondary. And if I'm a shipping guy in the secondary warehouse, I'm only interested in my own stuff. So at the start of my day, I immediately just go and filter out MMC So that's how the filtering works. Uh, if a carrier comes in, they say they have a, uh, a shipment to pick up for uh, Dalton, they can quickly filter out. They have New York, let's say, for example. In fact, they quickly filter out what's going to New York, or they have a specific PO number. You can quickly find it and filter that out. So for the rest of the demo, we're going to switch back over to the main warehouse. So going across the columns along the top, uh, this is all the information that customer service, shipping, uh, interested salesperson, or even production staff want to look at. Uh, shipping being the lifeblood of any company to make sure that you get product out on time to customers. At the start of your day, let's say um, the logistics manager or the 
uh, production manager or the plant manager can come in. Uh, they can look at what happened yesterday. So yesterday, we had a total of eight shipments. Only six of them got sent out. Let's have a look at the two that didn't go. So one, uh, this one in particular, didn't ship out because the carrier declined it. Um, so logistics or customer service, who was, whoever was responsible for booking that truck, uh, should have followed up at some point yesterday. And, and throughout the day, everything's updated live, so we could have caught it yesterday. But the carrier, uh, the person at the other end, said they can't do the 21st, they can do the 22nd. So the reaction would have been to find a different carrier on that load to get, make sure the customer gets their, their freight on time. Uh, when we, I clicked on that PO, it also brought up the details of that particular PO. So I'm paying $250 for this freight going to New York City. And throughout the day, uh, in the grayed out uh, columns, uh, sorry, uh, records, that those shipments have, have been sent out and the order's been closed off. So one of the ship out, uh, what the pack list number is, who did it, we shipped it in full, so ordered 100, shipped 100. The yellow ones were short ships. We short shipped line number four, ordered 100. We only sh we shipped zero of those. You can dig into that and find out why that was. And this other shipment has a comment uh, from the shipper over here, no show, but there's also a comment on the comment field here, highlighted in red. And just, re again, repeating that, that was a no-show. We have another comment over here. And the shipper says that there was an issue with the trailer, and they wanted to note it just to make sure there was any issues on the other end, on the receiving end, if there was any complaints. And taking you more, like, stepping into today's uh, stock schedule, shipments for the 22nd. Uh, the, their day has already started. Uh, some questions might be around, has this truck shown up yet? It was scheduled for eight. It just showed up at 1012. It got in the door at 1020. And presumably they're, they're loading it right now. And as trucks arrive and dock and depart, the shipping department can, can update it. And it's just a matter of keying in the time, hitting save. And alternatively, we can tie that in with a trigger on the the uh, shipping entry, or in uh, or even on Starship. When the when the orders close, we can note that time on there. This uh, is shipping today, but it's a little bit short. I'll just scroll over here and show the shortage. We got a 10% shortage on this order. We can double click to drill down on it. It's one item that's ordered 100. We're 10% short. I can double click on it. And that brings up a material planning drill down screen that shows all the orders against that particular part and shows us what our projected inventory balance is without any supply happening. So without any work orders coming in or without any purchased uh, receipts coming in, we're gonna be short 10 for today, right? Uh, but we look at the supply side, there's 250 scheduled uh, this is a manufactured part, so we're going to ask the production folks, when am I going to get at least 10 more so I can make this shipment in full? There's an inventory uh, screen over here, so I don't have enough material in the main warehouse, but I have plenty in secondary. I can choose to do a, a an IBT, a transfer over, and that way take care of all the shipments in the main warehouse today. There's a bill of material, so I can drill down. That updates the material planning to see if, you know, if, if I'm short, there might be a reason why I'm short. Uh, the production guys in the main manufacturing facility, they don't have this particular component, and that's probably the reason why they, they didn't finish making it. So the order that uh, Rashad just did is LPN 51. We double click on that. We just shipped it out. Rashad just shipped it out of Starship there at 1129. Uh, that's the way bill number. 
and that's the pack list that we generated and it's shipped out in full there. Uh, just to show you some of the email functionality. We can scroll down. So we've got two orders in here that uh, the carrier let expire. So we can switch the PO to somebody else in visual. So let's give it to a different carrier because best way is not being very responsive today. But maybe they just had someone off and they didn't respond to it in time. So we'll just try resending it. Click the email button. This is a drop down. Right now, uh, the standard option is just to send out a freight tender, but we can have a shipment reminder. Uh, we can have pack lists and commercial invoice. We can essentially whatever form that we can think of, we can create as a, as a form in the system and decide to have it as an automated email. And it's not just an email. It's it's actually um, tracked with a web uh, backend where we can track and, and have uh, forms. Sorry, this uh, connection is a little laggy. So the email component has uh, has two uh, backend systems working. So we have a, a print queue that takes care of any forms that come through, prints it into PDF, and then we have a script that just runs in the background on a scheduled on a scheduled time. So those two those two uh, orders that I selected just got queued up, and now we just emailed it out. I'll go to my inbox here, and I just got those per two purchase orders. So here I'm the, the carrier, the freight person on the other end, and I just got tendered the shipments. I click on the link. The database has recorded that I clicked on it, so it knows I, I saw it. And I can put some comments on here, so thanks for the order, or if I have an issue, which is more important, I can say that can only deliver 123, for example, or that's not really an issue, but, and then I put my name in there, I accept it. I can download my PDF right away. So you saw that I didn't actually go and create a PDF and have to attach it to an email. Or I can just tell the system, send me a purchase order, email it to me. And if I go back over in here, there's that email right away with the attachment, and that might be better for them to, to do their record keeping or have a backup. And back over in here where we had those two that I selected earlier to send out, they were in queue status. This is running in the background, the script all the time. And now if I refresh this, it's showing that one of them is mailed. I haven't uh, reviewed it or accepted or declined it yet, and the other one I've accepted. So this this column in here is of interest to anyone that's booking the freight and taking care of the freight on the shipments. Um, obviously, there's, cust there's customers that pick up their own freight. And I'll show here customer pickups. Obviously, there's no PO attached to it. There's a more powerful filtering option in here where you can filter on every single column on here. You can decide that I want to look at everything that's due today and beyond and filter. You can clipboard this and paste it to Excel. I don't think we have Excel on the server here, but we can also export it to an Excel file, this screen. So this is the essential part of the screen in essence is to allow anybody in the company to see what's going on in terms of our shipments. Do we have it ready? So if it's white, it's ready to go. If it's yellow, it's a little bit short. Orange is a little bit more short, and then we got red is 100% short in this case, but anything greater than 50 is red. And uh, everybody can quickly see over here if 
we have appointment time, so depending on you know your business, if you if you book appointments or if your carriers book appointments, that's all available in here. If if there are appointment times booked, then they'll show up on the purchase order as well for the freight. Okay, so I think we'll open it up to questions uh, overall. So, so thank you, Simon. Mm -hmm. I, I actually had a question for you. I mean, what what what's the save you know one of your customers in terms of time, et cetera, from using um, you know that uh, talk schedule? Well, the, we've we've had uh, multiple users over the years, and some of them have been on the system for 15 years now, and it's it's evolved quite a bit. Um, we have customers that ship a hundred and something truckloads a day. That's a lot of paper that you're printing through or a lot of Excel spreadsheets that we're saving them from having to, to, to print out and, and, and disseminate every day. Um, but more than that, it's a quick visual in terms of, you know, what, what status is my, my dock in today? So looking at just today's dock in our demo uh, set here, we got one, two, three, four trucks that are currently at our shipping docks and they're waiting to get loaded, you know, and we know that some of them are coming in late because they were appointed for earlier in the day. But it's it's a good view for everybody to see well, the most vital part of the operation in terms of making sure that we get product to our customers on time. Okay, good. So uh, we got a lot of questions, so we'll try, try to do our best to go through them. If we can't, what we'll do is we'll send out a response um, to all the people who've uh, sent indicators a question. Um, the first question is, do customers receive an email when the order is shipped? And, and that could be also for Starship as well. Uh, certainly, uh, I know our Plus can send out an email um, on that shipment, um, but is that something that um, we can do on the doc schedule side? Yeah, so with, with the doc schedule, with the optional email module, we can we can have any sort of document type in here. So we, the, these ones that I just showed you was a freight purchase order, and we can have a pack list, or we can have an ASN, or we have a customs invoice. So any type of document that can be generated off the data and visual, we can create, and we can create workflows around it. Thank you. And this is for Starship. Uh, can you change the package type in Starship after it's sent over from R Plus? Uh, yes, you can. Um, so Starship does have a packaging database. So the packaging type could be synced. Uh, we could do value translations on uh, anything, you know, the packaging coming out of the inventory. Uh, we also have um, in our in our tables relationships between uh, the part or SKU number coming out of visual and the box type that it goes into. Uh, so we can auto populate that. I think just in the example that uh, you showed today, we just had kind of the generic custom box because the packaging type wasn't defined, um, but we have all types of packaging, boxes, coils, bundles, bags, uh, skids, pallets, you know, what, and then you can add all of your own custom packaging to the system as well. Right. Okay. Thank you, Chris. And there's a question for RF Plus. When scanning the customer order into the picking screen, um, where do we get the barcode scan? Um, basically, in that regard, uh, you can do a drop down. Um, often there is a pick ticket produced in advance that can be done uh, through a report um, that you could generate on your own, or RF Plus uh, can generate um, the, um, the pick. Um, uh, pick tickets for you and you can scan it from there. So uh, basically a lot of times the, the people walk around with a pick ticket which could have printed barcodes on it. Um, you can go completely paperless and do a, uh, a drop down list to support that. And another question is can you pick the same part from multiple locations? The answer is yes. You can pick from um, any location. It doesn't have to be the primary location and R plus will accumulate um, the quantities. Uh, question around what does traceable mean? I'm assuming uh, you mean the part that requires trace. So that's the, um, in the part profile, you would have set up that particular part. I believe it was, um, what part was that? It was NRJ45? MMT. MMT, the part um, needed trace. So that, that required us to scan uh, the trace element associated with it. And when you scan the trace ID, 
uh, we pick up all the other information associated with it. And can you count the PAR code on the outside of each packet and, and count to, as to how many? Um, yes, you can. We can do, we can accumulate the, the scans as you, as you scan the, the packages. And there may be some customizations required depending on the type of barcode we're scanning. Um, for, for example, if it's a, uh, if it's an SCC type barcode where it has multiple quantities or is it a UPC type barcode? So we'd have to uh, talk to you, uh, uh, speak to that requirement, probably on a, a bit more individual basis, understand where you want that accumulation done. But, uh, but yes, it can be done. Can dimensions and the weight auto-populate into Starship if it is already populated in visual? Um, it, yes, we can, um, you know, take the unit weight and that'll be aggregated across the quantity of product. So as long as you have the weights in inventory, you can trust that. Um, Starship can be integrated with a, uh, a scale so it can read that directly off the, uh, the port. Or uh, we also have the ability to capture dimensions. There's a number of different uh, scanning scales that uh, we can integrate with as well. Um, or the boxes also can have dimensions associated. So you can get the actual weight versus the, uh, the dimensional weight, whether that's stored in the database or captured from visual, or we uh, put it on the scale and read it in in real time. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Um, does R plus use visual shipper ID, next number gem, or the shipper ID coming from R plus? The number comes from visual, uh, the next gen. Uh, for doc schedule, um, does the IBT generate automatically once triggered? An IBT yeah. moving product? Yeah, so you're gonna do an IBT between warehouses, does it auto create the, the IBT? Uh, the doc schedule is for uh, right now, it's customer orders and then whatever linked purchase orders there are. So it would be a freight PO uh, most likely. Uh, so there's no IBT support in doc schedule right now. Yeah, because I think you mentioned that there was an IBT, like somebody would have to do an IBT to move inventory from one warehouse to the next. Yeah. But you still need to um, use a freight carrier, uh, and that's where presumably you would you would yeah. book it. So there was a, this example, this uh, yeah. super long cord where where we have not enough inventory today in the main warehouse, but there's plenty of inventory in the secondary. So that that's that's uh, giving you the information that you need to make that decision. It's, it's not automating an IBT for you. Right. Um, in R plus, you can use the warehouse transfer function and move that uh, product around, but you would have to auto create an IBT or create an IBT in visual first, and then we would execute the move. Um, question is, with R plus, what are the time savings, key stroke savings versus working directly in visual? Uh, it's quite substantial. Um, we we can do benchmark tests if you wish. Um, basically, uh, we only present the screens or the fields that need to be entered. In visual, often you you may have to work with multiple screens. Uh, you may need to, uh, for example, if you're doing a, a a picking in visual, and you don't know where that product is, um, the lookup is available immediately on on in the same field on the same screen. Or in the visual, you would have to exit out of that screen and go do an inventory lookup. So it can be quite onerous and quite uh, difficult. So the, sub, so the time savings are substantial, not to mention it's real time. So you're, you're capturing the transaction at the point that it happens. In visual, you're offering, entering the information after the fact, or you're walking over to a terminal that's on the floor, and nonetheless, it's still after the fact as well. And we've got... Uh, Question, we have a situation where we have a single line item that has a quantity of one, but it's packaged in twos and threes. How does the barcode ha software handle that? I'm assuming this is for R+. Um, yes, we have a function that will allow you to basically identify a particular barcode as having a multiple quantity. We call that in our system the G10 function, but you can, as long as it's consistent, you can set up a particular barcode to represent a quantity of one or two or even a dozen, such that when you scan the that barcode, we automatically recognize it as that multiple. And and there was one question I, I just saw here. Um, is there an interface that we need to pull orders into R plus or is it dynamic? Uh, 
I'm assuming you're referring to the customer orders. Um, that automatically goes into R plus as soon as those customer orders are released. So that is an automatic uh, pull through on the R plus side. There's, so there's no need to push um, uh, COs over into R plus for processing and picking and shipping um, eventually into Starship as well. And likewise, the same is for doc schedule. As soon as that CO is released, it's available to be scheduled to a door and a carrier. Um, so um, that's pretty much all the questions. Can you bring up the uh, the last slide there, Simon? Um, we do have a couple of upcoming events. Our screen is still loading, so I'll read, read off what was um, to be on the next screen. Oh, here it is. Um, we do have a Canadian user group meeting coming up on February 11th in Milton. Um, encourage all Canadian users to attend. Um, we're going to be we're, we're going to have Rich Legoy um, speaking there, giving us the Visual 10, um, I guess, roadmap. Um, we'll probably even talk about Visual 11 as well. Uh, we'll, we ourselves have a customer town hall meeting where we're going into a bit more details uh, concerning the roadmap for our plus, along with Doc Schedule and Starship as well, and that's uh, on February 13th. And then uh, Ernst & Young, I referred to that particular study they did on supply chain. Uh, they have a, a great webcast coming up on February 20th, and they talk about the need to uh, make your supply chain more agile. And that's the whole point of today's session was around how do we get your supply chain, including your warehouse, to be more agile. And you saw three solutions today that are integrated with Visual that will support that, that journey and, and getting your supply chain to the next level. So uh, thank you again uh, for everything. And again, uh, we've got a bunch of other questions. Uh, can we, can we, should we try to answer them or do we have enough time? We can answer one. Okay. Okay. Can, um, how would you consolidate multiple orders going to the same shipping address for both pick, pack, and shipping? Well, that's pretty straightforward. Okay. So, uh, so basically, um, you would consolidate it at the at the at the Starship side of things, I believe. So, Chris, do you want to take on that question? Uh, yes. Uh, so, Starship has uh, the ability to group on um, a ship to address, or you can establish uh, like a distribution center where you have multiple shipments going to uh, the same location, even if it's an intermediate uh, location like a distribution center, and then it gets broken up and on to the uh, ultimate destination, you have the ability to create a master bill of lading that uh, can consolidate multiple uh, COs or uh, license plates going to the same facility and have uh, one document that, uh, that covers all of those, but, but also having each of the individual shipments underneath those. Yes. And, and you can also consolidate on the R plus side. So you can consolidate multiple COs into into one or two LPNs, provided they have the same same ship to address. So there's a couple ways to do it, um, either on the R plus side or on the shipping side. Again, depending on how your your people want to work. And um, the last question is um, further information. Uh, oh, sorry. There is there is a can you easily batch uh, uh, picking sheets from R plus. Yeah, we have a, um, a functionality called wave picking. So you can create um, batch picks of all your COs. So in, in that sense, you can create uh, one large pick order uh, across a group of um, COs. And uh, right now, um, it could either be set for a customer or for a common shipping address, or if you set up your routes in that fashion. And and also, last thing is, is um, further questions. You'll be getting a um, an email with a, a copy of the a link for the recording, along with um, contacts um, for further demos, interest, etc. Uh, so thank you again. Uh, thank you for all your great questions. Uh, I suspect this is a, has been of good interest, to everybody. And we look forward to uh, taking your supply chain to the next level. Thank you again, everybody. Have a great rest of the week.